Essentially, everything in the universe is a question of perfection of geometry. Right now, planets are going around the sun, universe is moving, galaxies are going on. They are all in place the way they are in place, only because of perfection of geometry. One day, for two minutes, if the planet Earth thinks, let me go little off the orbit and come back, that's the end of it, okay? If it loses its geometry, it's gone. So, the geometry of the existence is such that today, modern science is coming up with what's called as a constructional theory. What they're trying to say is, the geometry and the design of the atom and that of the cosmos is essentially same. Only the complexity and sophistication has multiplied millions of folds. This is something that we have been saying in yogic system forever, for thousands of years, anda pindanda, this means the individual and the universal is essentially same. Only the comple complexity is multiplying. So if it is in design essentially same, if you get it into right kind of alignment, suddenly it does things that you have never thought it can do. If you had a television in 1960s, you would have a bunch of aluminum tubes sitting on top of your home. You're watching your favorite one channel wonder and it went boop boop. Then you go up on the terrace and do this, it won't work, do this, it won't work. Then slowly get this into that place. Suddenly again the world pours into your sitting room. Just a bunch of aluminum tubes. Just get it to the right place. It absorbs the world and delivers to you in your sitting room. This also, if you just learn to sit right, breathe right, hold everything right in the right place, suddenly this can download the entire cosmos. Yoga means the technology of arriving at this because to just get the geometry right, just to learn to sit right, this is very difficult for a thinking mind to understand. A yogi spends his entire life towards what is called as asana siddhi. This means he wants to master one posture, only one. I know in California you do hundred and eight. If you go to half an hour session, you do hundred postures and come back home <laughs> because you want to sweat. No, only one posture his entire life, he's meticulously arranging, rearranging, rearranging, minutely arranging it in such a way that if he hits that particular posture, suddenly the entire cosmos is here, not there. For you to get some kind of understanding of this, for example, do you at least see me, even if you're not listening to me, it's okay. Do you see me? Yes. Hello? Yes. Can you use one hand and point out where I am? Oh, you got me wrong. You know, I'm a mystic <laughs> Now this light is falling upon me, reflecting, going through your len lenses, inverted image in the retina, you know the whole story. So where do you see me right now? Within yourself. Where do you hear me right now? Within yourself. Where have you seen the whole world? Within yourself. Anything and everything that ever happened to you, happened only within you, yes? Light and darkness right now happens within you. Pain and pleasure happens within you. Joy and misery happens within you. Agony and ecstasy happens within you. Anything that ever happened to you, happened only within you. Right now somebody next to you touches your hand, you think you're experiencing their hand. No, you are only experiencing the sensations in your hand. Even without the aid of that hand, if you have an imagination, you can create the sensation. Yes or no? Yes, you can. So, you are experiencing everything, whatever you have known, only within yourself. In the very nature of things, you cannot experience what is here. You can only experience the way it happens within you. 
or in other words, the fundamental seat of your experience is within you. If the entire human experience is being generated from within you, at least what happens from within you must happen the way you want it. Hmm? Now, is this the goal of yoga? No. This is a small thing that you need to put aside, that your body and your mind are not an issue. They are stepping stones for bigger possibilities. But right now, people spend a lifetime trying to learn… understand the tendencies of their own body and their mind. Sixty, seventy years of age, still you are struggling how to handle your thought and emotion, what to do with this? By the time you're sixteen, you should know how to handle your thought and emotion, but entire life goes how to handle your own thought and emotion. These are not curses, these are the greatest boons that you have, you can bloody think and feel. Yes or no? Yes. Isn't this… aren't these the most wonderful things about a human being? You can think and feel, but this has become a huge problem. And of course, there are fixers in the society, how to fix these things. First time when I came to United States, I just couldn't figure this, it's many years ago. And uh, wherever I went, people were talk talking about stress management. I thought, why, why would they want to manage stress? <laughs> because in my understanding, we manage what is… whatever is precious to us, our family, our business, our money, our property, whatever else that's precious to you. Why would you want to manage stress? It took me some time to understand, people have concluded that stress is a part of their life. Stress is not a part of your life, it is just that you don't know how to handle your own thought and emotion, isn't it? You don't know how to handle your memory and your imagination. All the wonderful things that you have as human beings which other creatures don't have, which set us apart in every way, see, nothing wrong with an earthworm, it's more eco-friendly than you. You're only now trying in California to be eco-friendly, right? They've always been eco-friendly, that way they're ahead of you. But what is beautiful about a human being is, we can remember everything, we can project into future, we can create a world of our own the way we want it. If we want it, we can pull it down today and create another world tomorrow morning in our mind. Yes? yes. But that's become the source of suffering for humanity. I hear every year, Three hundred and fifty million people in Europe are on psychiatric medication. This is thirty-nine percent of the population. So a society which has enjoyed generations of economic well-being, thirty-nine percent of the people, if you withdraw a f if you withdraw a few pharmaceutical formulations, thirty-nine percent will go crazy. You call this well-being, I'm asking. But do you see entire world making a journey in this direction? In many ways, the entire world is trying to make a journey in the same direction of madness. Because the experience of life as you sit here, the experience of life is not good enough. The world is moving towards chemicals to create experience. I am not looking at this morally. I'm only talking about the efficiency of it. Sure, chemicals can cause experiences because all experiences within you is also a certain kind of chemistry. What you call as peace is one kind of chemistry. What you call as love is another kind of chemistry. Joy is another kind of chemistry. Anxiety is one kind of chemistry. Madness is another kind of chemistry. There is a chemical basis to human experience, no question about that. Now, there is a way there is a way to take charge of this, that you make yourself in this way, that you are not an issue. If you are not an issue, you can handle any issue. Now the problem is you yourself a big issue. Everything, every gift that is been given to you, every faculty that's been given to you is a big issue. Your cerebral capability itself is a tremendous issue, isn't it? 
this is the greatest gift, but it's become an issue, it's become a problem. This is because there is no yoga. When I say there is no yoga, don't think I have to stand on my head, that's why it's not happening, no. No yoga means there is no union. You become too much of an individual. You started believing that you're an individual. Somebody thinks you're an individual, that's his problem. But you think I'm this, I'm a world by myself, then life will give you treatment. That's the treatment that is going on right now, suffering. As a generation of people, you are experiencing more comfort and convenience than any generation ever in the history of humanity. Do you agree with me? Yes. But whining like crazy <laughs> because life is giving you treatment. It's giving you treatment because there is no yoga. The boundaries of who I am has become so rigid that life will tell you in its own way. We can do one simple experiment right now. Put these hands together with your eyes closed, just intensely rub these two hands together for a minute like this. Just hold it apart by four inches. With your eyes closed, just hold these hands four inches apart. Something happening between the two hands? Okay? So this is the nature of your sensory body. If something effervescent happens in this, the sensory body will expand. You might have experienced this. You know why people are rubbing each other all the time? Because some sense of oneness. Yes, your sensory body expands and some sense of being beyond yourself. It doesn't last, that's a different thing, but at least there is some sense of unity in the thing. Now, the nature of the sensory body is such, if, if your energies are in an effervescent mode, then you will see sensory body will expand. Suppose your sensory body became as big as this hall, let's say, then you would experience all these people as a part of yourself. Because anything which is within the boundaries of your sensation, you always experience as myself. Suppose you experience this one and this one and this one and this one as yourself, then do I have to tell you, don't kill this one, don't harm this one, don't rob this one, don't torture this one? Do you need teaching? I'm asking. Thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not. Do you need teaching? You would not need any morality because your humanity is full-fledged. Your humanity is full-fledged means your sensory body expanded. Now you felt very clearly by experience, as you am experiencing the material that I gathered from many places and made body out of it and now I feel this is me. If you felt everything else is me, then we say you're in yoga. If your sensory body became as big as the cosmos, the entire universe you felt within yourself, then we say you're a yogi. I think we went too far with yoga. <laughs> because your idea of being individual is a very convoluted idea because you can't exist for a moment as an individual by yourself without the support of the entire structure, isn't it? The entire system is constantly working to just make you breathe and be alive here. So this sense of individuality is the basis of everything. All the crookedness, all the evil, all the violence is simply because this is me, that's somebody else, isn't it? Yes, fundamentally, this is me, that's someone else, I don't care what that is. If I experience this is me, then nobody has to tell me how to be. Nobody has to teach me what I should do and what I should not do. If you experience everything as myself, when you experience everything as myself, then we say you are a yogi. That's what being a yogi or being in yoga means.
not just turning and twisting our bodies.